Hi guys, welcome back. This video is for my pre-calc class. Uh, when we were doing exponential and logarithmic equations, we had uh, a problem come across to us with these half-life problems. So I wanted to have this up there so you can review before the test uh, of, of what we have going on. So if you read here, it says for radioactive decay that the half-life of radium, 226, is 1,599 years. Uh, given 10 grams of radium, how much will be left after a thousand years? So all of these start out the same way and what you have to do is set up with the compound interest or the growth and I use the same compound interest as we do with the exponential growth as I use the APERT formula. And so you have A is your amount after, P is your principal or your initial start, R is your rate as a decimal and T is time. Well, we know that half-life, if I start with an initial amount, then A can be changed to half of that initial amount. And that's what we have, knowing that half of it will be left over after a certain amount of time. So half of the initial principal will be left over. Algebraically, I can cross out the variable P and be left with one half equals e to the rt. So that is your pretty much your half-life equation that you can start with. Well, I know that radium's half-life is 1,599 years. So by putting that in, I got one half e to the r times 1,599. To solve this equation for r, because we have to figure out the rate at which radium decays. So to get the r times 1599 to come down, we'll take the natural log of both sides. And I have the natural log of e to the r times 1599. When you do that, the natural log and the e simplify to just 1, and that power property can come down. So I'll have the natural log of 0.5, 1 half 0.5, same thing, r times 1599. So dividing by 1599, we wind up with our rate equaling the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 1599. Now, if we were just told to solve for the rate, then we would put this in our calculator and figure out what we get for a rate of... winding up with the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 1599 and we get this as a rate. Now that's scientific notation there so there's actually move that decimal point four places to the left so that's negative 4.334 times 10 to the negative fourth but what we want to do now is we actually want to store this as X and we're going to use this rate to help us figure out how much is left after a thousand years because that's the rate at which it's declining. So if I go back to my APERT formula again, I know that my amount after a thousand years, I'm starting with 10 grams E, okay? Now that R is what I'm going to use from my little equation that I had before, that's the R that I'm going to use there, and then I'll have my regular time T that I'll plug in, and that T was a thousand years, so I'll replace that T with a thousand. So what I have to do now is I go back to my calculator, and I'm going to take that number I just did here. I'm going to store it, the STO button right to the left of the 1. I'm going to store that as X and hit Enter. And now the calculator knows that X is the negative 4.3 whatever times 10 to the negative 4th. I stored the whole rate and I didn't cut off any significant digits. So now I can just plug in 10 and then E to the X. There's that rate. 
times a thousand and that equals and that winds up equaling 6.482 so my amount 6.482 grams which hopefully makes sense because we know that half of it will go away in 1,599 years. So if we start with 10 and go 1,599 years, we'd be at 5. But we want to go 1,000 years, so it's got to be a little bit more than 5, so 6.482. So that's, in a nutshell, how you would start uh, or do this half-life problems. You have to solve for R first and then use that right here for your second part by plugging in R and putting in the initial uh, amount. So hopefully that helps review for you for the radioactive decay problem. Thanks for tuning in.